Marketing students, good evening. Catherine Robertson here. All right, so we are in week three. And again, you are the first section of marketing, the first course that we have offered here at EC3. So I'm still trying to find my footing as to what works in the timeline. Uh, so those of you that are having any issues opening items, I've had multiple questions about opening items. So let's address that first. Um, in each week, we have items to open, right? We have slides, we have discussion posts. Uh, we have links. There are links that I have videos where I'm recording videos, and then I also have other videos posted that are either uh, somewhere on the internet or possibly on YouTube. And all of these videos are there for, and these video links are there for you to, um, to help explain the chapter in, in more depth, right? Whether it's a video from me or it's a video um, regarding a specific uh, piece of material within the chapter. So example, for example, in chapter one, there are two videos from me, both. And there is there are lecture slides, right? If you have difficulty opening the lecture slides, for some reason they don't open on certain people's computers. When you go to the lecture slide, on when you're looking at your screen, on the far right of your screen, you will see three little dots. If you click on those three little dots, you will see there you are given options. You can either edit, uh, actually, you can only download on yours. You won't be able to edit del or delete. That's just on my end. So actually, you're only given the option to download. So if you uh, download the slides, if for some reason they're not loading, just download it and it will be uh, available to you in your downloads. Or it will just pop up in your PowerPoint, however, if you have your PowerPoint open. Um, so try that and let me know if that works for you. That is the same then for Chapter 2 and now for Chapter uh, we are skipping chapters three and four and going right to chapter five. So this week, uh, week three, we are actually taking on all of the items that I originally had planned for week four, um, and we will try to move into the game next week. I did send out your groups. Uh, try and get acquainted with your groups. You know, send out some emails, see if you want to exchange phone numbers, see if you're on campus at any given point. I did do it in alphabetical order so that there was no favoritism toward any specific group. Um, if for some reason you are trying to reach out to your group and there is a member that is unavailable, please reach out to me as soon as possible so I know. Um, you will be in these groups to, you know, kind of work through the game. I hope that this game is going to work okay. I'm having a little bit of trouble. See how it works. I'm hoping for next week. Um, in the meantime, you have your textbook and you have items from your textbook. Now, um, the... This week is, I did post your homework, right? So if you look in week three, you will see that um, we are doing chapter five. And in chapter five, right, you will see multiple items. I'm just making sure that this is exactly what I want. Um, in week three, we are, we are looking at chapter five, and this is market segmentation. Now, I do have a short video on market segmentation in there, but I also want you, um, you're going to read chapter five, and I'm going to go over that in a minute, the items from chapter five. But I want to talk to you about the homework this week. There are four homework assignments throughout the entire semester. And the home, this week will be one of, chapter five is one of the weeks you have homework. And so there's a little bit more this week um, for you uh, effort-wise to put in. Not only do you have your discussion posts, this is discussion three of 10, you also have a homework component, right? You'll have your uh, lecture slides, so chapter five. Remember, if they for some reason aren't opening, click on the three, uh, three dots, so it should be on the right of your screen, and there is a, a spot there to download. So sometimes if they don't open, and I have no idea why, sometimes they open, sometimes they don't. It's the same for me. Sometimes I click in the, on them and they're fine, and I'm the one that loaded them, right? And sometimes they don't even open for me. I'm not sure why it's a glitch in Blackboard, and so I apologize for that. Uh, I did. I was able to go into the textbook and make sure that I uh, have a copy there of the homework, the passage for you to read. So if you aren't able to pull up your textbook, again, you should have that saved to your uh, desktop. You shouldn't be streaming your textbook, and you should have it saved somewhere so you can read it offline. But chapter uh, homework one of four is from chapter five, and it is from your text, page 192 and 193. But it is a Word document there. So you can either answer the four questions separately and send those to me via email, uh, embedded in the email, email or as an attachment. Or you can use this um, Word doc form and answer them in there and return that as an attachment to me. Also, this week we have a discussion, right? 
The discussion uh, three, why would a local hair salon choose to use geographic segmentation? So once you've read through the chapter and done some of the work, you'll have a better idea of what geographic segmentation means and what some of the variables are. Why would a local hair salon choose to use geographic segmentation variables in a narrow concentrated marketing strategy rather than a psychographic, demographic, or behavioral variables? plus undifferentiated, differentiated, or micro-marketing strategies. So what might they use, right? So you're going to, that's, that's a big way of saying, what would be, um, why would they choose to use geographic segmentation and maybe, um, you know, certain differentiation strategies? So look into that uh, from the chapter, and then you're going to answer that question. You're going to also answer, might the salon be more successful at reaching its target audience by utilizing multi-segment marketing? That's question number two. So there are two parts to this question. And so you're going to answer each one to the best of your ability with two to three sentences each. And so that is our discussion question. Your discussion question, you're always um, welcome to chime in on other people's discussion posts. Again, that is not required. And if you do do that, though, make sure you're being respectful and using inclusive language. So for right now, you have your new group assignments. So try to make that pathway of communication with your new group members. Um, and I do have one group of two. Most groups are groups of three, and this is the way the class is set up. We only we have one group also of two. Um, so you'll, your assignment will be just slightly shorter. And in the end, so this, this week, again, we are doing chapter five. There is a market segmentation video for you to watch um, after you watch this video, my intro video. Now, um, when we are looking at um, market segmentation, scroll back through here. When you're looking at chapter five, right, one of the things for chapter five when we're talking about market segmentation, targeting and positioning, right, we're going to define, you really trying to figure out what, you know, what this idea of market segmentation is in the process of dividing market into smaller, more manageable, more precisely defined groups of consumers or organizations who have common needs and are expected to respond similarly to a marketing action. What that means then is, and, and some of the things that we might use are where are they located, right? Who who are they? What kind of behaviors do they have? And so these are the where, the, where, the who, the how, and the why, and the psychographic segmentation. Um, and so you want to reach, you want to like make sure that you get at your target market in an efficient manner, right? And you want to do that so that you can develop your products and really start to figure out what brand loyalty might mean. And so we see, if you look through chapter five, you will see uh, some different frameworks there that relate to, um, you know, different folks within your uh, market segmentation. Now, the next section starts to talk a little bit about business to business markets and some of the challenges we might see, some of the advantages of, of marketing to business, uh, business to business marketing, and a couple quick examples from the text you will see there as well. Now, the idea of segmenting, um, you know, business to business marketing is that we try to figure out, okay, what are their needs, right? What are the needs of the different businesses that we're looking at? Uh, the next thing that we are uh, looking at circling back around to these business to business marketing, right? Um, it's going to take a little bit of a different uh, avenue than you would when you're looking at retail marketing, right? Businesses that have, um, they're more tied to efficiency and cost structure than we would see typically in uh, retail situations. And, but we still have items in the business to business marketing that are similar, right? That are similar to um, things that we might see in a retail market. Now, uh, when we are looking at um, different segmentations, you know, when we look at geographical, we also can look at cultural, right? And there's something called, cultural factors include something called a, uh, an index, right? And there in, there's some indices and there's some key markers. And Hofstede, uh, if you uh, study cultural uh, differences throughout the world, we, you know, we tend to do trade and business business marketing with cultures that are most similar to our own, right? Because they align more easily. And so one of the ways that we can judge cultures really is this idea of, for example, individualism versus collectivism. Um, and, you know, what kind of culture, the U.S. is a very individualistic cult 
culture where, you know, the individual is the one to be rewarded. The individual strives for recognition, whereas in other cultures uh, that might be the collective team is the more important component and the individual is just part of a collective team. And so we see that on a continuum, right? The other thing we see is this idea of uncertainty avoidance. Certain cultures do not like to operate where there is any type of uncertainty or any type of risk factors. Like they only like risk, low risk situations. Um, they don't like to take chances, right? Whereas, so if you think of it as a continuum, um, some cultures don't mind taking on risk, right? They don't mind some uncertainty. And so if you think about two cultures maybe that are trying to trade or do business to business, um, uh, have a business to business relationship, the, the issue sometimes can uh, arise when you have a culture that is very uh, risk averse, right? And so their uncertainty avoidance is very high or at one end of the scale. And maybe the other culture or the company lies, uh, the other company lies within a culture that maybe risk is not, uh, risk is tolerated, right? A certain amount of risk is tolerated. And so when they are doing negotiations and when you see a marketing situation um, one in one direction or the other, you might see um, some missed cues there because they, they really have, there's some underlying cultural issues or underlying cultural norms that are very different. Um, and some cultures tend to have more masculine and not thinking of them as men or women, but there are certain traits that we consider that are called masculine traits, certain that are called feminine traits, right? And um, some cultures really are, you know, pride themselves on having more feminine traits among their uh, citizens and having some more uh, feminine traits that, that govern their organizations, right? Whereas other cultures have certain masculine traits that govern things. And so cultures that are uh, f further away on that continuum, right, also have uh, issues not only in their relationships, uh, business to business relationships, but in some of their marketing efforts. All right, what are a few other things that I think are highlights for this chapter. You know, this idea of target marketing strategies, um, the more that you can hone in on a specific demographic and kind of figure out, um, you know, the, the key tenets to that de demographic and how to hit them, right? So important because trying to cast a wide net often um, you miss all you miss all the fish, right? Casting a wide net or your net the is too, um, the weave is too wide and the fish swim right through it, right? So being very targeted, uh, laser focused in your target market uh, can uh, reap rewards. And so we kind of, you know, this chapter starts to discuss that and how we segment markets to find out the very specific one we want to target. And we may launch um, different plans that are targeted at different segments, right? All right, uh, let's see. So this chapter also goes into ethical concerns involved with um, in target marketing, right? So when we choose a specific um, uh, to market toward, we have to be very careful about our efforts, right? And how we profile, uh, maybe how, you know, ethical and racial profiling, um, children and teens, how do we market to children and teens and how do we do it maybe um, in an indirect way, right? Because again, we they are in this country, at least they're protected classes. Um, marketing to the elderly, again, somewhat of a protected class, and we don't want to take advantage of them, right? So a lot of marketing has to do with kind of fi finding those ways in, but we also want to make sure that we're not using our marketing efforts to take advantage of, for example, children and teens, or take advantage of the elderly, uh, or special low-income, um, targeting low-income groups, right? And so those types of things we have to be very careful of and be conscious of. All right. And then so this chapter, just make sure that from chapter five, your takeaway about market segmentation uh, is somewhat clear. Practice that discussion post um, for this week. You have homework for this week, the first time ever, right? Uh, we are in week three of 12 week. If you are in eight week courses, this is your seventh week and next week will be week eight. And we will, we're coordinating our week four with week eight of the first eight weeks. And then our week five will be um, the first week of your second eight week course. So it's a little tricky, the 12 week, managing those uh, with your eight week courses. Now, if you have questions for me in the meantime, I'm trying to get this game up online. Um, or if your group has questions for me, if you still haven't submitted a video or met with me in person or sent me an email, you know, reminding me that you met with me in person, um, please do that this week. So we are all caught up in week three. Um, we start the 12 week course a little bit slower than we do the eight week course because we have 12 weeks, right? It's a little bit slower pace. So if you're wondering, if you're in an eight week course now and you're wondering why our pace is a little bit different, 
is because we have is this is a 12 week course so it's a little bit slower paced than the typical eight week course um one of the questions for me i'm hoping in week four we can do the simulation so we are doing week four's material this week if you're wondering why we're in chapter five remember in chapter five not chapter three um Questions for me, you can always reach out to me via phone, 814-490-6473, or you can reach out to me on my email, croberts at ec3pa.org. I am in my office, the second floor of uh, West Campus, you know, almost daily. And if you need to meet with me, shoot me an email. Actually, shoot me a text probably if you, I can meet at this time. I've had a couple people reach out to me, and then we haven't been able to connect Um with the time so if one of those if that's you please keep uh try to reach out via text so we can establish a time i am on campus tomorrow um this upcoming saturday we have something called instant enrollment where you can go and start getting registered for class so you could send friends to that um, the other thing is that the spring schedule will be coming out shortly so make sure that you are ready for that there's some advising opportunities coming up next week so that is exciting. You can always reach out to me as well for advice, for advising um, or meet up with me on campus. I'm on campus quite a bit. And so, uh, you know, let me know if you would like to meet up. All right. Have a wonderful um, rest of your day. It is Tuesday and um, I will get back at you later this week.